Hello, my name is Marcello. Welcome to the Source Audio Video Design Group's YouTube channel. Today we will look at the Chord Mojo 2 DAC and headphone amplifier from our friends at Chord Electronics. This video will primarily discuss the design, build quality, and how it sounds with several headphones. The Chord Mojo 2 was released in 2022 and has sold like crazy since its release. The original Chord Mojo was a beloved product for its size, ability to stream via Wi-Fi when connected to a Chord Poly, and incredible sound. The Mojo 2 looks to build on that legacy with better performance and new features that will take your listening experience to the next level. First and foremost, if you are new to Chord Electronics, they don't use off-the-shelf digital analog converters from ESS Technology or AKM. Instead, they have used unique FPGA technology for over 25 years. Programming FPGA circuits with custom coding from the legendary Rob Watts, Chord Electronics provides what many believe is the world's most advanced digital to analog conversion performance. The Mojo 2 uses 40,960 tap filters, a modest increase from the original Mojo which employed 38,912. The same Arctic 7 chip, but new and improved FPGA code with improved WTA filtering with 40 DSP cores for better transparency and lower noise, or what has been referred to as lossless DSP. The Mojo 2 may be the best DAC under $1,000 available today. Add the fact that it is also capable of powering a good number of headphones and can be used on the go with Chords Poly, the value proposition of the Mojo 2 is hard to deny. The Mojo 2 is proudly made in Britain from aircraft grade aluminum, anodized bead blast, and precision CNC milled with a jet black finish. The small but durable build quality of the Mojo 2 is smaller than a credit card in length with a coaxial input, optical input, USB-C input, and micro USB input with micro USB charging input allowing the Mojo 2 to work with a cord poly. The Mojo 2 also allows two listeners to enjoy music together, which could be great on a flight or a train ride with two 3.5 millimeter headphone outputs. What you probably love or hate about most cord products is the color coded buttons. When you first start using cord products, there is a definite learning curve and the included quick start guide will be your best friend for remembering what each color means. The Mojo 2 also adds additional features over the original Mojo with the ability now to use the menu button marked with an M to toggle low volume range with a corresponding green color or high volume range represented by a purple color, crossfeed which is dark blue and allows headphones to sound more like speakers, pushing the stage more in front of you instead of just left and right. The menu button also allows you to increase or decrease plus or minus 9 dB to 4 areas. The sub bass at 20 Hz, the bass region at 125 Hz, the upper mid range at 3 kHz, or the treble at 20 kHz. The first three tone control adjustments are the most useful in helping to fill out the sound of thinner sounding headphones such as the HD800S or pulling back some of the upper mid range of the very mid forward sounding LCD5. The 20 kHz region is going to be one of those areas where you may pick up on a bit more piano overtones and air depending on how resolving your headphones are as well as how resolving your hearing is. But this will come down to your hearing capabilities. As we age, we all begin to lose hearing in the highest of frequencies. Following the rainbow is the easiest way to remember without the quick start guide what areas of the FR you are adjusting with the different colors. The start of the rainbow is red, as is sub bass, followed by yellow for bass, followed by upper mids, which is green, and lastly treble, which is aqua blue. Also one of the cooler new features of the Mojo 2 is the intelligent desktop charging mode, which allows the Mojo 2 to be connected to a USB power source on your desk. This is great as this should enable the Mojo 2 to be left plugged in and ready to go next time you are at your desk while allowing the battery life not to be diminished if left charging for long periods. Yes, the Mojo 2 can be used as a desktop DAC to feed your favorite desktop tube amps or solid state amps for more challenging to drive headphones or near field speakers with the caveat that you need an adapter cable to go from 3.5mm to RCA. I utilize my Cord Hugo 2 in this fashion but without the adapter cable as my portable and desktop reference DAC and headphone amplifier. I will briefly offer some sound comparisons when we get to the sound portion of the video. I tested the Mojo 2 both connected via USB-C to my MacBook Pro as well as with my ZenStream as a Rune endpoint with an adapter cable going from my 3.5mm to RCA and fed my Cord Annie which amplifies my near field speakers as well as fed it into a couple of tube amps on my desk and it worked flawlessly in this regard with no audible noise floor and taking up little to no room on my desk. You can also use the Chord Poly with Mojo 2 as a Rune endpoint, allowing playback of almost every primary file format with PCM handling up to 24-bit 768 kHz and DSD-256. However, there is no internal MQA support with the Mojo 2 or any Chord DACs. Regarding power, the Mojo 2 does an excellent job with most headphones, but tougher to drive planar magnetic headphones will be better served by the Hugo 2. 
The Mojo has a dynamic range of 125 dB with distortion and noise measuring at 0.0003% at 300 ohms. The power output is 90 milliwatts at 300 ohms and 600 milliwatts at 30 ohms with 0.06 ohms output impedance and 118 dB stereo separation at 1 kHz 300 ohms. The Mojo 2 allows for about 8 hours of listening time from the internal battery with faster charging rates and a 75% reduction in power loss over the original Mojo with 9% more battery capacity. Weighing only 0.4 pounds, the Mojo 2 packs a lot of tech and incredible sound into a small package. There are a bunch more technical details I could talk about, but then we would never get into how the Mojo 2 sounds. For more technical specs, I will link to our website and the Mojo 2 in the video description below. For my sound impressions of the Mojo 2, I used several headphones to listen to some of my favorite test tracks from several playlists I've created on Rune streaming via Tidal and Kobuz. I will share some of my notes for my music based impressions with each of the headphones I listen to. I also listen to the Mojo 2 with a couple of earphones, the Sennheiser IE200 and IE600, which I talked about in a separate video, which I will link on the end screen of this video if you're interested in the Mojo 2's performance with earphones. The short of it is that the Mojo 2 has no audible noise floor with sensitive earphones and both earphones sounded terrific with the Mojo 2. In addition, the tone control features came in handy with the IE200, allowing me to adjust the bass to taste for a better listening experience. Listening first to the LCD5, my most transparent and resolving headphones in the house, I found the Mojo 2 to be quite an enjoyable pairing. I was also able to adjust the upper mid-range some if I wanted to, as well as increase the bass with a Mojo 2 tone control, depending on the track or type of music I was listening to, which was something I appreciated with the LCD5 and Mojo 2 pairing. I listened to several tracks from Kitaro's Kojiki Remastered album, a blend of ethnic fusion, contemporary instrumental, new age, and progressive electronic. There is much use of the synthesizer and orchestral compositions throughout the album, which sounded epic when listening to the big sound of the Mojo 2 and LCD5 combo. I was amazed at how resolving the LCD5 and Mojo 2 sounded together. The transients or short bursts of sound at the beginning of an audio sample such as percussive, click, pop, or snap were very impressive. The soundstage depth was also classic chord with more depth than other DACs while still maintaining the overall character of the bubble-like soundstage of the LCD-5 that provided outstanding circular performance around the listener's head with fantastic imaging and image separation. I would characterize the Mojo 2 sound as relatively neutral with just a touch of warmth in the low end without any of the tone control engaged. The Mojo 2 is true to the music and aims to reproduce the music in this way. Bass hits on Koi sounded powerful and authoritative, and the strings were ever so lifelike from the orchestra. The opening of Orochi sent chills down my spine. The mixtures of the strings, wind instruments, and synths as they float in the air with razor-sharp definition was head fi at its finest. Listening next to the Meze Elite, I queued up Dire Straits' Brothers in Arms album. Combining atmospheric jazz and rock sounds with an overall rock pop feel, this album is one of my favorites for evaluating audio equipment as it was recorded, produced, and mastered so well. The Mojo 2 and Meze Elite combo sounds brilliant. The speed and impact of the transients again stand out, along with the image separation and layering of the images on the Elite soundstage. The Mojo 2 doesn't color the music or the signature of the Meze Elite, which I find to be on the warm neutral side. On So Far Away, Mark's vocals sound real and are portrayed beautifully on the stage along with the full-bodied sound of the guitar. The percussion and drums have great pop and thud to their sound with no image smearing. Every instrument is easily placed and well separated from each other. The cymbals and hi-hat have terrific splash and sparkle. Money For Nothing has one of my favorite intros to a rock pop song and the Meze Elite Mojo 2 combo didn't disappoint. The drums and guitar in the opening were pure magic and all I could think as I was listening was Damn, you have done it again, Rob Watts. Another magnificent pairing synergistically with the Meze Elite. The incredible sound of the Meze Elite is on full display with a bit of warmth in the bass regions and an exciting mid-range and just enough top end for my preferences to appreciate this epic track. Vocals never sounded too forward or sibilant, and this combo sounded very special with plenty of resolution, resolving all the fine details on this album with superior depth and separation to the images from other non-core decks, creating an overall sense of realism that is often attempted to be duplicated, but not truly replicated from lesser decks. Again, I was shocked at how good the Mojo 2 sounds for its asking price, punching above its price and sound with a Meze Elite with no tone control or crossfeed active. Listening to Walk of Life, I am convinced that Chord Electronics hasn't lost their mojo, putting their moxie on full display for us listeners with a brilliant upgrade to one of the already best-selling DAX in history in the original mojo. Listening next to my closed back reference to Focal Stelia, I queued up the weekend's Dawn FM, an abundantly fun album on the Stelia. 
with its catchy vocals, hard-hitting bass lines, and since so shiny sounding you need to wear sunglasses when listening to this album with a mojo too, the bass line sounded tight and dynamic in presentation, with the vocals sounding forward and energetic over the beat of songs like Gasoline. I liked a slight adjustment on the tone control for the 3 kHz region on the Mojo 2 with Estelia pairing, bringing the vocals back just a touch. Utilizing the crossfeed with Estelia was also a step up for my preferences, allowing the intimate, in-your-head type of soundstage of the Estelia to open up some with a more in-front-of-you sound presentation. Image separation, punchy dynamics, and image layering were all brilliant with Estelia and Mojo 2 combo. The ability to customize the Mojo 2 to best meet my preferences with Estelia made this a pleasing combination. Listening next to the HD800S and Snarky Puppies We Like It Here album, the exaggerated, airy, and open-sounding soundstage of the HD800S combined with the incredible performance, speed, and transients of the Mojo 2 allowed for beautiful imaging, image separation, and depth to the soundstage on songs like Shofukan with a lifelike timbre of the instruments. Knowing that for my preferences, the HD800S's biggest weakness is the lack of bass, I started to adjust the sub-bass and bass regions via the tone control buttons of the Mojo 2. I'm so glad I did. The HD800S levels up in the sub bass and bass regions, and the sound became fuller and richer in character, with more authority from the drums on the opening of Lingus. What many find to be a fatiguing sound in the HD800S is connected to the lack of bass and the very detailed signature of the Sennheisers. With the Mojo 2 allowing for adjustment to the sub bass and bass regions, a listeners can work around these deficiencies and tailor the sound to their liking, while keeping much of the incredible soundstage and detail retrieval of the HD800S. Another big thumbs up for me with a Mojo 2 HD800S combo with tone control to taste implemented. I wasn't expecting the following combo to sound very good as the headphone from Head Audio is a more current and power demanding headphone. However, I was pleasantly surprised to find the little Mojo providing plenty of volume for the headphones and the low end sounded tighter than I expected. With its additional power, the Hugo 2 may better match the more demanding head presenting a tighter lower end and faster sound. The little Mojo 2 can easily drive most headphones and you shouldn't count it out unless you are listening to very demanding headphones. That is where Quartz Desktop Amp DAC, the Hugo TT2, will best serve you. So to offer some brief comparisons of the Mojo 2 and the Hugo 2, I find the Hugo 2 with its Filter 1 active to sound more analytical than the Mojo 2, fleshing out even more detail in the music, which could be partly due to the more significant number of taps of 49,152 compared to the Mojo 2's 40,960. The overall speed of the sound also sounds faster when listening to the Hugo 2 when compared to the Mojo 2. However, many listeners will be drawn to the Mojo 2 for its slightly less analytical sound and the ability for the user to dial in the FR via tone control for their specific set of headphones. I also played with the filters on the Hugo 2, and while not an exact sound match, I found filters 2 and 3 to sound a bit closer to the overall stock sound of the Mojo 2. The choice is straightforward if you have tougher to drive planar magnetic headphones such as the DCA Stealth or Expanse and even the headphone from Head Audio, the Hugo 2 will likely be a better choice. However, for most listeners with easier to drive headphones, the Mojo 2 will do a tremendous job and is the best headphone amp deck for under $1000 I have heard. So as always, it will come down to your preferences and I encourage you to visit your local cord electronics dealer and give the Mojo 2 a listen and compare it to the Hugo 2 with your headphones to formulate your impressions as we all hear a bit differently and differ on what we value or prefer in sound quality. We have the Mojo 2 and Hugo 2 available to demo in our 10,000 square foot showroom to pair with numerous headphones. So if you are in SoCal, we would love to see you stop by and hang out with us and have a listening party. The entire line of Cord DAX is available for sale in the video description links below if you can't make it to the store. If you are interested in trading up your old headphones or other gently used audio gear for a new set of headphones, check out the links in the video description to our trade up program and don't forget we will price match other authorized dealers. We have some cool videos coming this year with new product announcements so don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay in the know. From $150 earphones to multi-million dollar home audio, cinema, and automation systems, TSAV is a hi-fi enthusiast paradise for building the system of your dreams. In the description below I will link to our website and more info on the Cord Mojo 2 and other products discussed during this video. So let's start the conversations in the video comments on what you think of the design and sound of the Mojo 2. Do you prefer it over the more expensive Hugo 2? While you're there, smash that like button for us. Until next time, friends, remember, let the music be your guide.